when you're dealing with your cash and cash equivalents, right? So what we're going to do here is, let's make that 2020 again, 2019, beginning and end. You've got here cash under cash and cash equivalents of 10,000 Rand. But at the same time, under your current liabilities, right? You've got bank overdraft of 80,000 Rand. Now watch 2019. Our, our emphasis is on 2019. When you're showing your balance of cash for 2019, you have a bank overdraft of 80,000 Rand, as you can see. So you'll do this, open your bracket, it will be the 80,000 Rand, which is your bank overdraft, but you also have cash and cash equivalents in the form of cash float or petty cash, what, but you have cash to the value of 10,000 Rand, therefore you subtract the 10,000 Rand and the net effect of that is an overdraft of 70,000 Rand. So don't take for granted that if there's an overdraft, there won't be a cash and cash equivalent. Like I'm explaining to you, if there's an overdraft, don't stop there. Go back to the top of the information and see, is there a cash and cash equivalent like it is in this case here? And when you're showing it in your calculation, and here again, I'm appealing to you, make sure that you show your calculations. As you can see, I've shown you, there's my 80,000 overdraft, okay? There's my cash and cash equivalents, giving me a net overdraft of 70,000 Rand. So therefore, I've covered now your cash flow in quite detail. I've looked at quite a few components of the cash flow statement. Please make sure that you know how to answer any questions on the cash flow statement. Okay. <laughs>